Welcome to this new thing I'm trying where I'll give some quick thoughts on some newly released sports games. These videos have less production values and I'm not really using a script because I feel like it's not worth it to make a whole production for a game that is largely the same. This is just to get my quick thoughts out there since people were asking about this game. All right, well, enough with the exposition. Let's get on with it. The consensus around WWE 2K23 is that it's a really good wrestling game, and I'd say the same. This game, along with most other yearly release sports games, just add on to what was already established while not changing the formula too much. This is obvious from the gameplay, which is mostly the same, which isn't really a bad thing. I enjoyed the faster paced gameplay of 2K22. Hit detection is better, as I felt like there were times in 2K22 where you whiffed on strikes for like no reason. Maybe the hit detection is a little too good in this game because you can even get hurt from wrestlers sliding into the ring. Like how does that work? There's this new pin mini game where you have to time a button press and I like it much more than just mashing buttons. The AI is the biggest change this year as it's much more aggressive and the difficulty is much more than just, oh, the CPU is the same, but they reverse more now. Now they're actually more aggressive and I love this. There are even times where I'm like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> the AI still has its little weird ways, like why is Cena setting up all these chairs in the corner? Like, what are you doing? There are even these AI sliders that you can adjust how often the CPU goes to the top rope and stuff along those lines. It's a welcome change for a series that has had brain dead AI for years, even in its most critically acclaimed entries. There are still things that need to be improved. The weapon physics are still nowhere near as good as they were in SmackDown vs Raw 2009. And that game's like, what, over a decade old at this point. The submission system is still button mashing, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. And they brought back the stamina meter, man. Yes, the meter was in last year's game, but it hardly mattered. But this year, your guy gets blown up and throws punches like he's underwater. It's not as bad as past games where you're like dry heaving all over the ground, but I'd rather not have this personally. I mean, it, it, it's a pro wrestling video game, not Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't need the most mundane aspects of pro wrestling, which isn't real by the way, to be simulated, you know what I mean? This is a game where you could play as an invisible John Cena. Why would he come out and do chain wrestling and rest holds and suffer from a stamina drain? <sighs> All right, I'm done with that. I just had to get that out there. And if you're still with me, let's talk about War Games. War Games is the big new feature, and this match is insanely fun. I never really watched the WCW like that, and I don't watch modern wrestling. So my only experience with this match is clips I'd see online. Two rings, a cage, weapons. What's really not to like? And this would be hard to mess up. Really good job with this, and I love the aesthetic to it. The only thing I wish you could do, and this is more so a nitpick more than anything, is that I wish there was a free-for-all version. Make it like the chamber where it's elimination. Having this match be exclusive to tag team matches limits it in my opinion. Showcase mode returns and it's the best one in the series, honestly. It's about John Cena, but instead of playing as him 20 times, you play as his opponent in matches where Cena lost. This alone is a breath of fresh air. The match selection in this mode is way better than it was last year's. There are no filler matches that happened on random episodes of Monday Night Raw. This is actually a good representation of matches, with the only missing ones being Daniel Bryant, CM Punk, and Kevin Federline. But I understand why those ones aren't in here. So I'm going to talk about the ending, so I guess spoiler alert if you want to be alerted even though I kind of already spoiled it. After you completed the challenge, you have to pick a wrestler to face Cena. And as soon as the match starts, a cutscene triggers where you get hit with an AA automatically and lose. I thought the game glitched, like I triggered a losing cutscene somehow, but no, it was supposed to happen. Even saying LOL Cena wins, a common saying that was on the internet community, internet wrestling community way back years ago. But you really go on to pick a wrestler and then proceed to fight this invisible John Cena. As someone who is completely over this type of joke, I was dying laughing here, and I thought it was hilarious. Now this guy is hard as shit. We haven't seen a challenge like this since Undertaker in 2K14. What a great move by having this in. Then after you have a surprise match where it's a fatal four-way elimination against Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, and Bruno San Martino, who I don't think was ever in a WWE game, correct me if I'm wrong there. Showcase did amazing this year. It'll be hard to top for the next year's game. 
My faction returns and implements online play. It boggles my mind that this wasn't in last year's game. It can be fun, but the issue is that the game has a balancing problem with submissions. It's very easy to get them. If you have a red body part and your opponent targets it with a submission, it's pretty much over. You can tap the buttons as fast as you can, but it doesn't really matter. This is why you'll run into a lot of players using wrestlers with submissions like Matt Riddle. It's easier to kick out of pins, so going for submissions is an easier way of winning. It just makes no sense. In what world would you feel more confident going for an abdominal stretch than you would a finisher? The world of 2K23, apparently? There's also this weird thing with kicking out, where you sometimes have to use your opponent's setting as opposed to your own for some reason. Like I have pins set up to the new timing minigame, but sometimes it'll be the button mashing one because that's what my opponent has set up. That's stupid. There's so many sports games that let you use your own personalized settings, even in online play. Why doesn't this one? That's weird. But overall, my faction just doesn't grab me. I feel like these card collecting modes work best for team sports. I remember the UFC games tried this years ago and it didn't work for them either. My GM returns and this mode sucks. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to be pretty blunt about it. When I reviewed 2K22 last year, I said that they'll just add in multi-man matches and more match types as a new feature to be advertised. And that's essentially what they did. They added multi-man matches and they added more match types, but didn't really add any substance to the mode. There are some things like the season is never ending and after each season, there's a draft to shake things up, but nothing like you still can't do trades. There's still no calendars to let you know what date or month you're in. There's no Royal Rumble match. There's no money in the bank. It's like, come on, how limited can this game mode possibly be? They're lagging so far behind decade and a half old games at this point. Even something as simple as signing free agents is so lame because you can only sign them to be permanent or you can sign them for a certain number of weeks. You can't contract negotiate and you can't even change how long you would like to sign them for. It's always going to be a set of like five weeks or seven weeks or so on and so forth. This GM mode is still severely limited and doesn't add anything besides this power card system, which is all right, I guess. I mean, it could be a little cheap if you pick Xavier Woods, you immediately steal a superstar for no reason. This mode just doesn't do it for me. And I hope next year we actually have some progress, but I, th I think it's just going to be mostly the same with probably more power cards or something along those lines. My Rise returns as well, and I don't like it either. They try and talk and advertise this mode as a career mode, but it's not a career mode. You have this whole opening package which talks about how there are so many different ways a WWE career could go, and in actuality, in my eyes, it's really just two ways. You have the lock, and you have this other one whose name I can't recall for whatever reason. I'm sure I have it on the screen. And that's how your career will go. This is not a career mode. It's just a linear mode where you pick different storylines at different times, and the storylines rarely have any sort of cohesion or continuity between them. And it still does that thing where a majority of the storylines are progressed through text messages and social media posts. It's lame. It's boring. Like, oh man, your career can go so many different ways. But I picked the lock storyline and no matter what you do, you will always debut the same way as the lock. I spent time making my guy. Look, I made Dr. Fish MD. And I'm just gonna come out with a whole new attire looking like a blue maven. And you will always debut this way against Sami Zayn. There's nothing to change. So yeah, it's not, there's no contract negotiations or anything along those lines that would make for a good career mode. It's just linear stories. And if you're into that, cool, you'll like this mode, but I don't like it. So I'm not gonna play this mode for too terribly long. And last but not least, I guess I'll touch up on online. The servers for this game are all over the place. Sometimes they're completely flawless and other times I get kicked out of matches left and right. And I guess that's just something we're going to have to accept from these WWE games. I don't think there's ever been a WWE game in the history of the WWE to ever have good online servers. So I'm pretty sure I'm already used to this at this point. One little interesting thing, though, is that that nobody seems to talk about is they have this new eight man Royal Rumble. Now, when I saw this, I thought it meant eight man Royal Rumble as in only eight real life players can play, but it's still 30 men. I thought that would have been cool, but in actuality, no, it really is just eight men. 
<laughs> what a dumb match. Like, Battle Royale is so popular right now, why wouldn't you implement a 30-man Royal Rumble? But then again, the service can barely run in general, so maybe I'm asking a bit too much. And overall, those are my thoughts on WWE 2K23. Once again, my thoughts are similar to last year's game, where I'm kind of in the same spot. I really, really like the gameplay. They made some good strides there, and this game is very fun to play. But in a month from now, will I be playing WWE 2K23 besides messing around with my friends? No, there's nothing here to keep me coming back because I don't like any of these game modes that are being presented to me. And that's why I didn't really do a full fledged review, because a lot of the stuff I had to say was exactly the same. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, if you like this new style of video, uh, stay tuned because MLB The Show comes out in, I want to say, two weeks from now, and I'll probably do one for that. Uh, and it's just something to get more content out there because waiting two months for a video is kind of crazy. But if you like this, let me know. Peace out, y'all.